creek Walk them up and down in the summer heat Same old boy changing like the seasons Country kid turn it to a town right heathen Everybody, welcome back to Old Man Van Running here again in the Old Man Van Cave, the Old Man Van Castle. Today's video is my update. It's my training update. The Boston Marathon is one week away. I'm finished two weeks of my taper. I got my last easy week to go and I'm making final preparations for my trip to Boston this coming Saturday. In a few minutes, I'm going to go over my pace pro plan, my pacing plan for the Boston Marathon. And uh, we'll go into some of the details of my preparations. But before we do that, as you know, I qualified and registered for the Boston Marathon. I had a seven minute and 29 second buffer. And you know, I beat that five minute and 29 second cutoff by two minutes. So I'm in, already registered. And you know, I decided why not raise money for a great cause. My mom and my grandmother, as I mentioned in my previous videos, both suffered from Alzheimer's disease. So I called the Alzheimer's charity of the Boston Marathon, Team NDALZ, asked them if I could raise money as well. And so far, I've raised over or almost $2,500. So I've been doing a real great job with that, and I'm really happy about it. I may have mentioned this in a previous video as well. I'm going to be wearing a custom singlet for the Boston Marathon. First of all, here's the front of the singlet right here. Old Man Van Running, Boston 24 and Boston Marathon colors. But more importantly is the back for mom and a picture of my mother right here. So I'm taking my mother with me on my journey from Hopkinton to Boylston Street. And I'm really excited about this and, and I'm really happy I'm going to be able to do this for a really good cause. So my first two weeks of taper have gone according to plan. I've only done two pool running sessions. The rest were outside or on the treadmill. Got all my runs in everything I needed to get in. In fact, this past weekend, I did a five mile marathon pace run on Saturday. And then yesterday I did a nine mile kind of progression run. Both runs were really good. Saturday's run had some hills added in. Nothing too crazy, but you know, just to keep the legs spry and keep them ready for what's gonna come a week from today. So with the IT band syndrome issue I had earlier in the training block, I was really worried that I wasn't gonna be able to get the quality runs in or the volume to kind of hit the goals that I wanted for Boston. I'm looking to PR at Boston. I'm looking to break 340. I'm looking to get a real big buffer so that if I don't get into London in FY25, I can run Boston again. But there were serious questions as to whether I could get the quality runs I needed and also get the volume. Aqua jogging or deep water running saved my training. It got me through the IT band issue. It actually increased my strength, my overall fitness and my overall strength. And I got all my long runs in and I nailed my quality workouts. I'm now feeling great. No more IT band syndrome issues. I'm still putting KT tape just to be careful. And I've still added a couple of aqua jogging sessions just to be careful but all systems are go for a really good result next Monday. Weather forecast right now is for mid 50s to low 60s, dry with a bit of a tailwind, so perfect conditions for you know a nice fast run. The key is gonna be being disciplined in my pacing plan. So let's get right to my pace pro strategy for next Monday's Boston Marathon. So here we are in the Garmin Pace Pro plan. This is in Garmin Connect. So as you can see here, 2024 Boston Marathon. Now I've got 26.23 miles and that's because, you know, the map that I was able to get had 26.23. Obviously, it's hard to run the perfect tangents. The good thing about Boston is it is point to point, not as many turns, but there's a lot of folks out on the race course. So it's going to be, you know, tough to hit anywhere close to 26.23, but you know, I'm probably thinking about 26.4-ish. Um, I'm really gonna do uh, my best job at trying to run the tangents as much as possible. But in any event, I've got it in here for 339, and that's 821 per mile. Going down, I put it at a even split, even split. You know what? The stretch goal is to have a little bit of a negative split, but I figured I'll put in an even split 
and, and start from there. It's 821 per mile. I figure I can do an 820, but let's see how that's going to go. Uphill effort I also have at an even split, and basically what this will do is it will give me all my mile splits here in Garmin Connect. We'll scroll down. As you can see here from the graph, when I'm going downhill, it's a little bit faster, and then it's a little bit slower when I go uphill. This program compensates for the elevation change so that it adjusts your pace accordingly. So that's really good. The key for me is to make sure that I stay disciplined. Folks are going to go out, all that adrenaline. The first four miles, as you've all heard, is pretty much downhill, right? And it's very easy to get caught up in the excitement and go out too fast. And going out too fast on those downhills will trash your quads for later in the race. So the key for me, and I've been very good at this, is to stay disciplined in my pacing. And I really am going to concentrate on doing so. Let the rabbits go and pick them off later in the race. So as you can see here, going down into the splits, I start out at 8.13. It's a pretty significant drop in the first mile, 109 feet of drop. So 8.13 should be pretty easy since my pace right is about 8.20. So a few seconds faster than that would be normal. So that shouldn't be a problem whatsoever. I just have to make sure I'm shortening my stride, not overstriding and trashing the quads and just keeping to that pacing. Then uh, as you can see, it progresses to 820, 820. Those are still downhill, just not as significant. Mile four, again, about 818, 820. So it's sticking right around the pace that I wanna hit overall, so that's good. As you then see, it levels out, and you can see how the pacing goes from here. So I have to stick to these paces, I really do. I'm gonna be doing my fueling every five miles. There's a water stop every one mile. So I'm gonna be hydrating, taking a Crank Sports E-Gel every five miles, religiously. And you know what? Just sticking to the pacing. So then once we get to the hills, the Newton Hills, right? So that is around mile 16. That's when the hills start. A series of four hills actually, right? It's not just one hill. And as you can see, Mile 16 is a really significant downhill, but then you start climbing. Mile 17, plus 71 feet, right? My pace goes from 806 up to 833. Really important that I lean into the hills, but I don't overcook it going up the hills, right? So you want to power up the hills, you want to have something, but you don't want to overdo it going up the hills. So 833, I think that's about right. Then in mile 18, it's also a climb another 827, so that's pretty good. And then mile 19 is actually a downhill, about turn that to 817, and then we start going up again. There's a smaller hill in mile 20, 825, and then the penultimate, the penultimate heartbreak hill at mile 21, 835 for that hill. Now, I have a friend, a friend, a high school friend, uh, uh, she's a nurse, her daughter lives in Newton, she's gonna be at the top of Heartbreak Hill. She asked me what I wanted. I told her I wanted a 16 ounce flat Coca-Cola. So she's gonna be waiting at the top of Heartbreak Hill with a flat Coca-Cola for me. That absolutely got me my Boston qualifier at the Marine Corps Marathon in 2022. I got a bottle of flat Coke from my buddy at mile 23 and it really gave me a boost for the last three miles. And now I'll have it at mile 21, which should be even better. Now we look, now it's downhill to the finish line. So it's over five miles or around five miles of downhill running, right? So in mile 22, it's 79 feet of drop. That I'll take my pace all the way down to 809, 810. And then you can see the pace is here. Now the pace is here, 809 to 818. It's all downhill for the most part, except the last mile. Now the key here, the key here is, those are conservative paces. The goal is to get to the top of Heartbreak Hill, get that flat Coke, and have something left in the tank. If I'm feeling good and disciplined in my pacing, I really think I should be able to get closer to eight minutes and maybe throw in a couple of sub eights in there. If I do that, I may even be able to get down close to 335. But breaking 340 is the goal, and I'm gonna do everything in my power to make sure that that happens. When I ran the Marine Corps Marathon and qualified, 
I actually hit my pacing exactly. I planned for a 342.30 and I hit a 342.30. If I stick to my pacing plan here, there's no reason why I can't achieve a sub 340 and potentially get down to 335. So if you have any questions on Garmin Connect, Pace Pro plans, how to set them up, how to use them on your watch, let me know in the comments below. So there you have a quick update. My Pace Pro plan in Garmin, the plan for next Monday. I'm going to post some more videos this week going over some of the other preparations. I'll, once I get all my gear and everything laid out, I'll also post a video on that. One last thing is, I'm not going to be carrying my GoPro during the Boston Marathon. The BAA really discourages filming of the race, and because I have a goal here, right? Because I have a goal to break 340 and maybe hit 335, I really want to take this opportunity to race Boston, to race Boston without distractions. I hope to get a lot of good pictures from Marathon Photo, and I'll publish a nice slideshow once I get those photos. And hey, you know what? I'll also take a lot of video of Marathon Weekend, so you'll get a lot of video of all of the activities surrounding the Boston Marathon. So thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you haven't subscribed already, please hit the subscribe button and that notification bell so you'll get notified when more videos are posted. Comments, 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 any and all comments really does help the channel. Also, if you have friends, running pals, acquaintances that you think might enjoy the Old Man Van Running channel, please let them know. Also, as I mentioned earlier, I'm raising money for Team NALZ. Right here is a QR code you can scan and go right to my fundraising page, and I'll leave a link in the description below. Thanks again for watching this video. Remember, lace up those shoes, and let's get out on the roads. Railroad tracks run along the creek, walk them up and down in the summer heat. Same old boy changing like the seasons, country kid turn it to a town right heathen.